Sunday. I'm here with my two girls. I'm gonna change Charlie. And have a little dolly moment. They couldn't be any more different. But let's take a look at Sparrow for a few moments since we're gonna spend so much time with Charlie. So little Sparrow is in this outfit. Some of you may recognize. <clears throat> this is a gorgeous handmade piece from, um, I don't know if you'd call her a seamstress. Anyway, she does handmade um, babies and children's clothing. Um, she is Kit and Stitch is the name of her store. I found her on Instagram. She has a website. Uh, and this piece I had, it's called the Leo Romper. And I had originally bought it for Annie Brewster because it reminds me of the undershirt that Little Orphan Annie was wearing in the movie. The original Little Orphan Annie, or, well, it's just called Annie. It's got these, the bottom are like shorts. She had to custom make it to be, to fit newborn because um, it was only bigger sizes. She was awesome to work with. The little wooden buttons say handmade. So when I uh, sold Annie Brewster, I sold this piece in one of my clothing sales to an awesome collector on Instagram. And I had, once I, I was thinking about it after I had Sparrow for a little bit, and I thought, you know, this would work for her really well, even better than it did on Annie, because, you know, you see the armholes are kind of big. Uh, so, but being able to have the full body um, makes it work. So it's a, an oatmeal or a cream color, off-white color, um, ribbed bodysuit onesie thingy. Well, it's called a, the Leo Romper, as I said. And it's super casual, super soft. She's got some room in it. It's so cute, you can see her diaper through it. I love it. I had also bought that bonnet from her at the same time. But I just don't, um, I don't love the way it looks on her, so it's just off to the side. But this is my beautiful girl. I'm so in love with her. So she's just chilling out here. Those gorgeous sparkling eyes. Love her. But we're gonna spend some time with Charlie Girl. I'm gonna get her changed. So let's put you back up. All right, so we're kind of sticking with the same color theme. We've got little turquoise socks with the yellow duckies on them and her, this is the pacifier she came home with. And you've seen this outfit before. This was on Honey Klaus. It's a very vintage um, Gerber, Carter's, very vintage Carter's terry cloth set. It's got a satin bear on it with the yellow and the turquoise. And it's actually for six months, 14 to 17 pounds. But it fits them okay. I'm going to put it on her. She's kind of due for something pink and dressy, but uh, when I went, I have to clean out all my baby clothes and get rid of some stuff. So when I went in the bin, this popped out at me. I want to see how it looks on Charlie. So what's the update on my new baby. He's done, you guys. Will is done. He is shipping tomorrow. He's gonna ship out to me tomorrow, Monday. So he should be home on, on Wednesday. And um, so I've seen his final pictures and he's adorable. <laughs> And the more I look at him, the more I love him. And he's supposed to be super, super cuddly. 
So we're going to have a box opening on Wednesday, you guys. My little naky girl. So I think the one of the hot topics of conversation right now is the price that we'll pay for silicones and um, specifically regarding one um, <clears throat> incredible full body silicone that just sold on private auction for $25,000 US and um, so there's been a couple of videos that have happened there's been some chat going on about around it I was talking with uh, my friend Ashley yesterday or no this morning goodness a lot happens in a day about that and of course it's a shocking figure my sister who isn't a collector was quite shocked she was like wait you mean dollars <laughs> Um, the baby is at least, you know, is arguably at least as realistic as, as any doll that has ever been created, I would say, in my opinion. Uh, you know, some could argue that it's the most realistic that they've seen. The baby is gorgeous. So the question that tends to come up, I mean, the question's always going around is circulated again is you know how much would you pay for a doll oh I like you in white Charlie and so I was chatting with Ashley about it and I said you know like I want to say that it, that like, even if I had millions of dollars, you know, that I, you know, that's more than I would ever pay for a doll. That's what I, that's what I would, that's what I want to say. Like, let's do a little brush on her hair. But I had to admit, and I don't know how she felt about this. <laughs> That if, if I had a lot of money, I mean a lot, to where that became more like the equivalent of what I have spent on dolls, you know, what would I? I think that we can agree that I don't have the greatest self-control. I haven't exhibited the greatest self-control. when it comes to dolls, even with my budget being what it is now. She's so cute. I wish I had a little yellow, just a little yellow like bow to clip in her hair. Yeah, so I had to admit that I, if I, if I had like massive amounts of money, I. I probably would do it. Um, just being honest with my track record. Um, so then that brought up like an interesting thought, like what makes it so outrageous to think about that, right? So I think the first thing is when you think about how much, how much need and lack there is in the world, I think that's probably one of the great triggers for people. I mean, Think about it, one, you know, I would say typically price reborn for some people is, you know, could pay a month of rent. And that's just, that's for the vinyl reborns. So when you get into even a reasonably priced silicone, you're getting into significant amounts of money. So when you think about paying what you would pay for, you know, like a basic model car for a doll, you know, can be shocking. Um, I think people immediately think about how much you could do with that money um, for other people. 
they do see what a lot of people say with the dolls that they do buy when people have, you know, even say that's crazy for an amount of doll. They say, you know, it's, it's my money I worked hard for. Like, who are you to say what I do with my money, right? But there seems to be this line maybe that where it gets to be too much. Um, where even those who may defend what they do spend, you know, then find it a little bit more understandable to say the, the, the definitive words too much. So I'm kind of thinking through this as I talk about it. I guess the big question is, are there limited amounts of resources? Are, are there limited amounts of abundance in the universe? I don't know the answer. I may or may not have opinions on it. I don't know. But I think that's what it comes down to. First of all, I feel like um, service to others and sharing abundance with others is always appropriate and I would hope that what my feeling is that the more resources I had the more that I would share is true so let's think about other big ticket items let's think about cars okay so people would say well a car is different because you drive it car is different because you use it okay very true but let's say somebody wants a luxury sports car and they live where I live in the Chicago suburbs do you need a car that can go over 200 miles an hour with no noise and no rattle here. No, you definitely don't. First off, there are country roads, definitely country roads. Those are day trips, but for the most part, you have traffic lights every quarter to a half a mile. You have massive amounts of traffic. You obviously have law enforcement. The reality is, you know, or if you think about a Hummer, for example, people drive Hummers around here. There are no mountains. It's the Midwest. It's flat. So the motivation for buying it isn't its utility necessarily. Maybe it's its capability. Maybe it's its beauty. Maybe it's its comfort, bells and whistles. whistles. Um, and I would say in most cases, it's for a car enthusiast that's excited by that item whether it be the look, whether it be the engineering, um, whether it be the reward for hard work and success, whatever it is. So if you're into something else, whether it be art, whether you collect swords, you know, ancient art, like antique collectibles, swords, and artifacts, and so forth, whether it be, you know, decking out the house with unbelievable surround sound and movie theater and all that stuff. Like, there, there are outlets for enjoyment or fun that aren't necessity all the time. Certain things we can relate to and certain things we can't. So I don't know if I had, you know, like ridiculous amount of money and I was contributing and all of that. I don't, you know, most people don't live a life where they give everything away. Certainly most of the people that are in the doll collecting community don't give everything away because they have doll or two or um, what have you. So I don't know. If it was within a comfortable resource range, I can't say I wouldn't do it. At this point, it seems crazy and ridiculous and 
um, irresponsible or, um, or maybe we feel envious. I don't know. Because if somebody purchases another art form, this has been discussed recently, paintings and stuff like that. Um, if somebody, you know, is an art enthusiast, you know, somehow that's more digestible by society. Although plenty of people say it's stupid to pay that much for a painting. Sure, plenty of people say that. People like diamonds, people like all kinds of things. So anyway, um, so I was thinking about this idea of whether what it really comes down to is, 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 th is there a limited amount of abundance available in the universe? Because I think that the, the idea of not being fair or responsible comes from the idea that you're taking that money and putting it into something like quote unquote frivolous, um, when really, I mean, it's not like that money's disappearing off the planet. It's transferring from one person to another person who will spend that money. I mean, the money's always circulating unless you're putting everything in, in, in a safe and burying it and it'll never see the light of day again. Those funds are still circulating in the world. <laughs> Just one person took them from their account and put them in someone else's account. And now from there they go out. Um, so it's not like you're erasing the money just because you gave it to someone else. Okay, so there's uh, there's one there's one line of thinking that the universe is like infinite. God is infinite. The universe is infinite, and that money is energy. A lot of people say, you know, money is 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 energy. It's an energy transference. When you buy something, whether it be a good or a service, you know, someone has put their energy into an item or into, a, you know, some service for you. And then you then give them, you know, energy back in the way of finance, financial energy. Finance is money. So... Some people say that there is unlimited abundance in the universe. I mean, like, if you think about energy, right? I mean, we don't, we have zero idea how much energy is contained within a universe that has things like space and time. Because even just looking at the energy contained in one star, which is one sun, right? We've all heard the stories of apparently how many solar systems there are and how many stars there are just in what we can see and it's just it just continues to increase the more that they study astronomy and so forth so the example that they gave us like abundance and energy is like if you can if you put it into a different way of thinking like well-being i wouldn't say i think i'm going to be sick for a little while like, I've been feeling really, really great. I've been very healthy, and it's not really fair that I keep feeling so well when there are so many sick people in the world. So I'm going to give up my wellness for a little while so that other people can have some wellness. Um, I didn't make this up. I'm just sharing, you know, one thought process from one, you know, way of looking at the world. Um, so that sounds silly. I think I'm going to be, you know, sad for a little while because I've been so happy for so long and there's a lot of people that are very down and very depressed and I'm going to give up my happiness for a while so someone else can feel happy. So that, you know, thinking about that idea seems, you know, like, well, that's silly. Everybody can be happy. Everybody can be. So some people think about abundance in that way as being energy and then we, you know, can continue to create more and more abundance for everyone because of this. Anyway, I, you know, it's probably just completely unrelated and, you know, silly way of looking at it all. But these are my thought processes. These are the things I think about when I'm doing the dishes and listening to other people's videos. I don't think I've ever looked at the inside crook of her elbow. Hmm. Yeah. 
so that's my Charlie girl. I really, 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 really like her in this outfit. I love her in the white. I love that it's got her two best colors in it. I love that this turquoise brings out her gorgeous blue eyes. I love it, love it, love it. She's so cute. All right, guys. So that's my nonsensical musings for today. Appreciate you guys joining me. I hope you'll come back and check out the box opening on Wednesday. Uh, we'll see how everything goes with that baby. I am, um, you know, he's he's in a position of being planned prior to Miss Sparrow coming along. And I haven't harnessed the, uh, you know, infinite abundance of the universe quite yet <laughs> in the form of finances in my bank account. So I'm certainly not a proof is in the pudding test case for that idea I was sharing but uh, we'll see how it goes um, I've got a lot of really great things happening over here so we'll uh, everything will play out exactly as it's supposed to be but he's gorgeous he's a very very rare sculpt long sold out and um, I think you're gonna be really really pleased to see him as I will I can't wait to pick him up and see how he feels and um, and uh, see what he looks like in person because you can never really tell when you have you know studio lighting and all of that um exactly the the shadowing and the skin tones and all that jazz so um stay tuned for that if you have anything to add to the conversation please leave it in the comments down below I always love hearing from everybody. You guys are all really, really awesome. And we are sending out much love. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye for now.